If you're thinking about becoming a wildlife biologist or a scientist, one of the best things that you can do to prepare yourself is read the literature. Hi, I am Dr. Stephanie Shuttler. I'm a wildlife biologist and my channel is about empowering scientists with information and inspiring you to conserve the natural world. What do I mean by the scientific literature? Collectively, the scientific literature refers to all of the studies in peer-reviewed journals. The primary way that scientists communicate with each other is through these publications. I'm a scientist, so to conduct a study, I would come up with a research question, hypothesis, or objectives. I would collect the data in a standardized, vigorous way to be able to address those questions. I would then analyze the results and then interpret the results. But if I stop there, nobody is going to know about my study, unless maybe I tell my friends, my family. This is the whole purpose of the literature and peer-reviewed publications. I then write up a manuscript of my study and I submit it to a scientific journal. The journal then sends this manuscript to other experts in the field. They review it and they can either decide to um, accept it right as, right as it is. This rarely happens or never happens. <laughs> um, minor revisions, major revisions, or reject. The most common are reject and um, major revisions. After I go through my, let's say I get revisions, after I go through those revisions, then I submit it again and the um, reviewers then give me feedback again. It goes through with this round of iterations over and over and over again. The goal of this is to increase the quality of the studies that are produced because we are essentially checking on each other. Once the study gets published, it is then in the literature, what we collectively call the literature. And when you are a scientist, you read the literature to help you write your study. You have a big introduction section, a big discussion session, and you need to build upon other people's research and sometimes your own to both set up your research question and also to discuss the results. You have to discuss the results in the context of the other studies, the other species. You, you have to draw in this other scientific knowledge. This is the main way that scientists communicate with one another. They read the literature. This tells us what types of studies have already been done. A lot of times the literature will give you clues as to important questions that are coming next or unanswered questions. And it also helps you build upon your studies. You can write in such a way that you're setting up your next study um, from your previous study because maybe you found something new or different. Okay, back to you. You're thinking about becoming a wildlife biologist. You want to start reading the literature to see if this is really the field for you. This is one of the things that I recommend to people. Now, I don't want you to go read the literature and worry about understanding every single little thing, but this is a really good idea to think if this field is right for you. And also, if you are thinking about going to graduate school, what types of species you wanna to study, topics you're interested in, questions, ecosystems, going through the literature will help you find your interests and it will also lead you to professors who conduct that type of research and can help you find a graduate advisor. In this video, I am giving you three ways to look for peer-reviewed publications for free. The first way is through Google Scholar. You're gonna type in your browser, scholar.google.com and this allows you to search the entire database of academic journals that Google has. So you can do this by topic. You can look, if you already know what specific professors you're interested in, you can search for them by their first and last names. You can limit it to certain time periods. 
As you can see from my search results, I then get all of these publications that pop up. If you click on the link, that will take you directly to the journal's website and how to access that article. For a lot of these publications, you have to pay directly through the journal. If you look along the right-hand side, you'll see a lot of articles are often populated with PDF versions. These are usually on authors' websites or um, on places like ResearchGate. If you do find a paper that you're really, really interested in, you can click on the link to the paper's page and there will be a corresponding author with their email. You can just email that author directly and say, hey, I would love, don't say hey, say dear, <laughs> dear doctor so-and-so. If you're not sure if they're a doctor, I just usually assume it's better to, it's better to be called a doctor when you're not a doctor than to be called a Ms. or Mr. when you, when you are a doctor. Anyway, so you email them and ask them if you could receive a PDF of their publication. The second way is by joining ResearchGate and searching through ResearchGate. ResearchGate is um, essentially like a LinkedIn for academia. A lot of people post their publications there. Again, you can search by author, you can search by topic. This is a really great way to explore potential advisors. Once you go to their site, you can see they usually have a list of their publications. And if they don't have a PDF there, you can request access for one. And usually people will give you that. The third way that you can access peer-reviewed publications for free is through open access journals. These are journals that do not have a paywall. Um, so you can just search through the journals themselves. Just go to the journal's website and type in whatever you're interested in. So I studied forest elephants for my PhD and I could put in forest elephants or camera traps. That's another area of my area of expertise for me. And then all of the relevant journal articles will show up. A friend that I went to graduate school with actually um, organized a whole list of all open access journals in ecology. I will post that in the description below. Those are the three main ways that I get access to peer reviewed publications when I'm not associated with the university and therefore do not have a subscription. I hope this helps you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you subscribe so you don't miss out on any more helpful tips for anyone who wants to become a scientist.